Hello, my name is Marielle. Welcome back to another one of my movie reviews. <laughs> Applause goes out to Guillermo del Toro for winning the best animated feature at this week's Golden Globes. As soon as I started watching Pinocchio, I was mesmerized. Without further ado, let's start our talk about this film. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio is a 2022 Netflix adaptation. Geppetto creates a wooden puppet after the loss of his young son. Upon his wish, the wooden puppet is brought to life. Curious about the world, Pinocchio gets himself into trouble. I was anxiously awaiting the highly anticipated Pinocchio on Netflix. Guillermo del Toro's latest project is a magnificent expression of stop motion. While some themes are dark, it distinguishes a positive father and son bond. This adaptation of Pinocchio augments Geppetto's character and his evolution as a parent to Pinocchio. This is one of the first adaptations to give Geppetto a backstory. Geppetto is my favorite character. Initially, he's not willing to build a bond with Pinocchio, but he takes a chance. During his first time on screen, Pinocchio's appearance was off-putting. Unlike previous adaptations, Pinocchio lacks discipline. At times he came off as annoying with his ignorance, but that's the whole point. He discovers what matters. I was disappointed in how downplayed Jiminy Cricket's role was. Like most adaptations, he serves as the voice of reason, but other than that, not much else. Jiminy's role is reduced to running gags of the poor Cricket being squashed by objects. He spent an entire segment trapped underneath a book when he could have been helpful. Pinocchio includes a cast of wonderful voice actors. Ewan McGregor, David Bradley, Gregory Mann, Christoph Waltz, Finn Wolfhard, and Kate Blanchett instilled emotion and clever vocal effects. For her character as a voiceless monkey, Blanchett was so eager to be a part of the project that she happily lent monkey noises to a voiceless character. One of my favorite characters that has merited more development in the Pinocchio story is the Blue Fairy. Known as Wood Sprite, voiced by Tilda Swinton, she gives Pinocchio three chances to correct himself. The stop motion animation for Pinocchio was fantastic. The film won a record as the longest stop motion animated film. Hard work went into every minute detail, like having a door open a crack and then having a character shut it again. I like when filmmakers do that. It shows that they want to make an impact. These are not just puppets. The characters felt like actual people, which is what Guillermo del Toro wanted. Faces were so expressive, mainly the eyes. I was so captivated inspecting every detail on the screen. It is so easy to get lost in this film. Guillermo del Toro did extraordinary work on this adaptation. Originally, he wasn't intending to finish it. He focused heavily on how to expand the story. The war segments took me out of the story. Replacing Pleasure Island, instead, Pinocchio goes to a youth war camp. I wasn't fond of the scenario. It didn't add much to the story. The scenario did, however, do a good job of cementing the bond between Pinocchio and Candlewick, played by Finn Wolfhard. This friendship deserves a spinoff. Be warned, Pinocchio is an emotional story. This Pinocchio is not for young audiences, brandishing themes like war, religion, and death. Death is a prominent theme in Pinocchio. It's a good idea to talk to any younger viewers about the themes presented in Pinocchio. Aside from that, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio is a striking film. I think you'll need to watch it a second time because there's so much detail to encounter. I am so excited about next week. January 19th through the 29th is the Sundance Film Festival. 
To kick off the weekend, next time I'll be talking about the way, way back. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel or to my Patreon. My name is Mary Yell, and this has been another one of my movie reviews.